being on the show. Thank you, Rev. Angela, why are we seeing a shift from the right on these issues? Well, it's political expediency. They're doing what's best to garner votes as the country continues to shift demographically, as the country continues to evolve like the president. Um, you're going to continue to see a change in the GOP's politics. They can't afford to be as conservative and as right-leaning as they once were. Now, Abby, uh, your dad uh, took grief uh, for taking some positions. Now I see Rand Paul defending his stance on immigration. Of all places, Fox News. Take a listen. People like, you know, Coulter and Limbaugh say that people like you are being suckered into an agreement well, here. What would you say I've to got that? a news flash for those who want to call people names on amnesty. What we have now is de facto amnesty. Here's another news flash. We haven't been too competitive in the last two national elections. What do you say when you hear Rand Paul saying something like that, Abby? My dad doesn't sound all too crazy anymore, does he, Reverend? <laughs> but look, I mean, we talk about immigration, we talk about gay rights, uh, we talk about minimum wage even. I mean, these are going to be the issues that are going to dominate the 2014, the 2016 election cycle. So, I mean, it's no surprise the Republicans are now coming around realizing, look, they've looked at the statistics, Reverend. They've seen the facts. They, they recognize that the majority of the country is not where the party is right now. The majority of the country wants gay marriage. They are in support of gun control. They are in support support of a higher minimum wage. Uh, they're in support of, of a pathway to citizenship. So it's no surprise to see Republicans like Rand Paul and even Reince Priebus coming out and speaking about these issues and the fact that we have to evolve. The challenge, though, Reverend, is coming across genuine, is coming across in a sincere way to say, we're not evolving on these issues simply because we have to to win. We're evolving on them because we feel it's the right thing to do. And I think that's going to be the greatest challenge moving forward for the party, is coming across genuine. And, 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 and sincere. And I think, you know, when I think about the president in his inauguration, uh, he said that we have an obligation, that's the term he used, to move the country forward. Uh, watch this, Angela. You and I, as citizens, have the power to set this country's course. You and I, as citizens, have the obligation to shape the debates of our time, not only with the votes we cast, but with the voices we lift in defense of our most ancient values and enduring ideals. He talked about us shaping the debate and setting the country's course right here and now. Is, is that now resonating, you think, Angela? Um, I do think it's resonating. I also think that there's a natural kind of organic evolution that happens within our politics. The Constitution was written years ago, but uh, most of us see the Constitution as a living, breathing document. That is, there's there are hence amendments, right? There are all types of things that we can do to ensure that we're creating change long term. Um, the president has continued to push that. We saw him do that even from across right. across the ocean yesterday in Israel. So when you look at the different things that we can do as a people, it isn't just about the vote. It is is also about the voice and then for the Republicans more often than not it's also about the money the checks they write to the political process you, you know Abby let's go back a minute on the uh, gay marriage issue when you look at the support for gay marriage that you mentioned uh, currently 58 percent are for it that's up 26 points since 2004 and it has an 81 percent approval rating among those 18 to 29 now, your father came uh, out in support of same-sex civil unions back in 2009. Why has it taken the party so long to catch up with him, in your opinion? I think that there's a, a big conservative right movement, as we've seen, take hold of the party over the last few years. And it's, it's challenging to separate their religious views with their political views. And it goes back to the, you know, the... Uh, church versus state argument that, yeah. that they need to figure out that separation but you know I, there's a real conservative case to be made for gay marriage that you know Republicans have always fought for uh, a strong family unit for long-term relationships for equal rights for all Americans I mean nothing uh, about gay marriage I, I think does not represent what the Republican Party represents so I, I continue to make the argument that the Republican Party should lead on issues like gay marriage but look I mean the issues that we've all talked about immigration gay marriage 
these issues are not going away anytime soon. The Republican Party needs to find a way to own some of these uh, and, and, and talk about them with common sense and in a, gen, in a genuine way that really uh, reminds the American people that, that they care about them, that they are all about giving American people uh, equality and opportunities. And, and it's, it's going to take some time to, to really bring people on board, I think. But, Angela, the fact of the matter is the president's progressive agenda is taking hold, whether it's being done for political reasons, whether it's uh, being done for genuine conversion or political convenience, it seems to be taking hold. A year ago, we would have never dreamed we'd start seeing this kind of movement. Certainly not this kind of progress. I think one thing, getting back to what Abby was just talking about with religion, you know, re uh, Republicans have almost had a stranglehold on morality. And I think that what you're also starting to see, Rev, is an evolution of what religion really means, about what it means to worship your God yeah. or to, to love your neighbor. And morality. That's exactly right. So if you're moral, then clothe the naked, then make sure that the 47% is taken care of, then make sure that people have access to jobs and are paid what they're worth, what their values should be. Right. You know, the morality is starting, starting also to take a day. Plus, the only way to, to really protect uh, your church is to make sure that church and state are not run uh, in, in one way. That's exactly I mean, right. you've got to protect people's right You're to absolutely disagree right. with you. You You're cannot right. protect your church by having a theocracy, because the theocracy may be somebody else's church in charge. Angela Ryan, Abby Huntsman, thanks for coming on the show tonight. Thanks, thanks Rev. Ahead, 10 years later and still no apologies or regrets from the gang that misled us into war. Chris Hayes joins us on the selling of the war in Iraq. And first it was a war on Christmas. Now Bill O'Reilly says the liberals are going after the Easter Bunny. This is a wrong decision. Discover why Hubris was MSNBC's most watched documentary in 10 years. Join me for the step-by-step -step true story of the American government leading the American people into a war that did not have to happen. Hubris, selling the Iraq war. Then at 10, dig deeper into the truth. MSNBC continues the conversation with a journal that broke the story.